We're now joined in the slate pit. It is Hunter Jackson. How are you today? I'm doing good, except for one thing, that we're not really in the slate pit. We're actually, come here, I want to show you this. We're actually in the house of Huntar. Right there we now. go. And this is House of Huntar is sort of my new sort of company thing that I'm starting up with me and some of the people that are helping me out, like Derek Smith over there, who uh, yes. is currently coloring on some comic stuff. But I have a lot of uh, st original slate pit junk here. Okay, like great. Scrota Moon's costume that you were just panning over. Well, I, I saw the sign on the wall, so I figured we're paying tribute to the original Slate Pit. Oh yeah, that is, that's the original Slate Pit sign, the Don't Talk About It, Do It, that hang in, hung in the original Slate Pit and all that stuff. Well, let's talk about that. I know uh, all this started up in Richmond, Virginia, but is that where you grew up? Yeah, well, I, I grew up kind of in the sticks to the east of, of Richmond, okay. and, uh, or actually to the west of Richmond, and, um, the slave pit started, there was like a big warehouse building and lots of dairy, different artists. Yeah, it was, the, it was a Richmond Dairy building. It had been um, like this place where they were packaging dairy products like ice cream and stuff like that. So there were a lot of weird rooms like uh, that had used to be fruit, had used to been uh, freezers, okay. with, like, big crazy doors. And the place that I had, I wanted to make a science fiction movie. So... I saw this part that had a big uh, wrought iron staircase and there was a big hole in the floor and I was like oh man I'll put the engine room down here of my spaceship and then they can be yelling back and forth with the bridge upstairs you know and uh, so we were going to build a set for this movie I wanted to make. And that's Scum and, Dogs uh, of the Universe? That was the Scum Dogs of the Universe movie. And uh, so I, I was renting the space and I started making costumes and props to make the movie but at the same time it was all a lot too about um, I really hated Star Wars a lot yeah and I wanted to show people what a cool science fiction movie would be like like I wanted I thought that it should be like Road Warrior in outer space you know and one sure. of the things that I hated about Star Wars the most even though it was you know nominated for big time awards and all that for it is the soundtrack I hated the music from Star right. Wars so bad and I wanted this science fiction movie to have a really cool, like crazy punk rock uh, soundtrack, you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of bands were practicing in the building uh, and stuff. So it was this multi mixed use. There was rehearsal, yeah. there was art, there was. There was uh, sculpture Theater students. and all that. There were all kinds really of stuff form. going on. And in the basement, the whole place was run by this guy that was doing a t shirt. Uh, he was printing t shirts and stuff. Okay. So, um,. He was the landlord, and there were lots of bands and stuff, so I would get in touch with different people to do music and stuff. And at the time, Dave Brockie was doing uh, his band Death Piggy, mm -hmm. which was had a lot of crazy theatrical stuff in it. Like, he used to make um, these crazy papier-mâché dummies and, like, say, oh, this is my Uncle Nobby, you know, and then he would, like, abuse the guy for the whole show and stuff like that. Mm. And so there were a few times that, that we did, uh, I did special effects with Death Piggy as well. In fact, the first time that we ever did a spewing dick was in a Death Piggy show where Death Piggy was warming up for Wendy O. Williams. Okay. And she had just been in Playboy, right? And, right. And uh, so we thought it would be funny if since we were... Was this with the plasmatics or she was so No, this was after she had split from the plasmatics. Okay. Oh man, she was doing this killer show. It was so good, man. She was in really awesome shape and she was wearing this like uh, black leather bikini that looked like a horse harness and oh man, she was so hot. I was right there on the, on the front row reaching my arms up and she was teasing me, you know, holding her tits like <laughs> two inches from my fingertips, you know. It was really an awesome show. But anyway, Death Piggy was going to warm up for her, and uh, she she had just been in Playboy, so we thought it would be funny if Dave like opened up the Playboy thing and acted like he was jerking off. Mm. And uh, so I made I had this this uh, spew dick that I had made for this robot costume. Anyway, so we took it. We took this. Uh, it was made from a um, like a ketchup bottle, like would be at a diner. Yeah. And then it was attached to something that looked like sort of a, a piece of a vacuum cleaner hose. 
-hmm. So it was kind of ribbed and it had this really cool jerk off action. And then you just would unscrew the top, unscrew the head and fill it up with some kind of glop, you know, and it was good for one or two good squirts, okay. you know. But the thing was, the audience, as soon as the audience saw it, they knew what was going to happen, and the audience just sort of split like the Red Sea, and the oh, stuff man. just squirted out on the floor and all. But that was the first time we ever did a spew dick. That's so crazy. I had done, I had been working with Death Piggy a little bit, doing funny theatrical stuff and all. And um, so one of the things that Death Piggy used to do a lot was Dave used to work with different people in the dairy building and make up these, uh, you know, different s silly bands it would have like one song or something like that, okay. or two songs. And then he would warm up for Death Piggy by having this other, these other goofy bands come out and sing one or two songs and then, you know, go backstage and then take off whatever silly costume they had. So we thought it would be really funny if, if uh, they used the Guar costumes. And I would sh just show up with a big bag full of all the stuff and then they would pick it up and put it all on and stuff and we would just do these... Crazy so these shows. were just the costumes you were making for the movie. For the movie. And the, the movie also had uh, a scene in it where one of the characters in the, sh in the movie, and it had a lot of similarities to the story of Guar. It, it, there was, it was a lot about characters who had been marooned on the earth, and Techno, uh, Techno Destructo was sort of like uh, uh, coming to earth to, to get them and uh, take him back into outer space to conquer the universe. So that part of the story was the same kind of, you know, and it had a lot of similar uh, characters like Cardinal Sin, the holy warrior from outer space that's like this giant robot guy, you know, and stuff like that. So it had a lot of similarities to Guar. Uh, and it sort of evolved into Guar, you know, and sort of right. what sort of ended up happening was Dave's crazy theatrical show, you know, sort of had a head-on collision with, with my movie idea, and we started doing Guar. You know, and the, the... So you got bigger response to that than Death Piggy. Right, and the crowds would start to leave. Like, after we... People would come to see what kind of weird thing we were doing with Guar, and then they would leave, you know. And, uh, uh, like, there would be a big buzz about, oh, what are they going to do with Guar this time? And and uh, all stuff like that. And we were experimenting with spew effects and stuff like that. And and uh, uh, the show was definitely way, way cruder than it, than it is now as far as the techniques and the way, you know, we learn with, with as we grow. And, you know, I'm still learning and growing now. Yeah. I just built this super awesome, like, uh, Bigfoot guy here. And this is... Uh, Life size and a person actually gets in there. Yeah, this is... Uh, a person gets in here and it's built so that you can get in the wrestling ring and duke it full out. Full limber, yeah, all full, motion. Full mobility. It's made so you can breathe good and you can see good. You know? Amazing. I got to ask before we go any further, growing up, who were some of the movies or influences? Who was some of the stuff that shaped your mind to even want to create Scum Dogs Universe, which ended up in the choir? Well, I was, I was always, um, I sort of grew up, my, my dad was the warden of this big prison, right? Okay. So I kind of, we grew up in this little house that was surrounded by this big, huge prison. And uh, I had three sisters, so I was kind of isolated from other kids. There weren't any other kids around for me to play with and stuff. Ooh. So I was like always uh, in front of the TV watching cartoons, like watching Space Ghosts and the Herculoids and Johnny Quest and all the Alex Toth cartoons and stuff. And mm -hmm. I also read tons of comic books and like I was super into the Fantastic Four and and all of that kind of stuff and uh, um, and also I would see I would see stuff on TV uh, and I would uh, try to build my toys I would try to change my toys into some of the stuff that I would see on TV so I grew up like building and altering my toys all the time and that sort of developed into a hobby of just building weird costumes and weapons and you know props and costumes and stuff like that and and I started uh, um, doing animated films with G.I. Joe's and and stuff like that and then I um, I ended up I went to uh, 
went to school, went to like art school and stuff, and I ended up going into commercial art, but they never really did anything but tell me not to do what I do and tell me that there's not a market out there. For so, so they were trying to make it more commercialized, more right straight. You know, and my response to that is, fuck you. You know, I know that I'm not the only person in the world. I don't consider myself a unique person. I know that there are tons of people out there that are into the same crazy stuff that I'm into. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, every single person is genetically, you know, bred to crave sex and violence. I mean, and that's why we're still here, because we ate, killed, and ate animals, and we had sex with each other to make more of us. And that's why we took over the planet, you know, compared to other creatures. So we have these things in us, and we can't get rid of them, no matter how much we try to pretend like we're civilized and cultured and stuff, and how our society grows in order for us to be able to get along with each other without killing and eating each other. So, so now, uh, before you launched to make this movie, Scum Dogs, uh -huh. had you made any like short films or was oh, there yeah. any? When, when okay. I was in when I was in college and stuff, um, I'm, I'll emphasize on animation and stuff. But that's where the the filmmaking bug first bit me, and after I. After I got out of college, um, this weird thing happened where I lost my whole portfolio of movies. So I sort of had to start over from scratch. I mean, I lost my whole college portfolio, and I'm supposed to use that to get a job, right? So I walk into places and go, oh, I know how to do animation and stuff. And they're like, well, oh, yeah, well, show us some of the stuff you, you did. And I would be like, uh, I kind of lost it, you know. You can't do that. So, you know, I had to build a new portfolio of of stuff and that's kind of why I started renting the, sh the space in the slave pit okay. was to try to build up a new portfolio of work so I could try to get some kind of job and prove that yes I do really know how to make movies and crap like that but me and Chuck Varga who was this executioner yeah. had worked on this movie called one summer called Captain Communist and the Ultimate Doomsday Device and that was a movie it about it, it was a lot like Terminator and it was really funny because it, we worked on it just before Terminator came out 